using the cool my gpu copper mods on the 3090 i've been letting it heat up for about 10 minutes now and the results are already shocking me this is way better than i was expecting let's add some copper front and back plates to my zotac 3090 because let me tell you the results were amazing now if you want to know exactly when should you copper mod is it really worth it and how do you go about checking the thermal temperatures to make sure there's even an issue with the memory? Well, I just posted a video about that recently. It was actually a video right before this, and I'll make sure I add a link to the description as well. That way you can go to that video and learn more. But this video is more going to focus on actually installing the copper into the graphic card. I did decide to do all of this with CoolMyGPU.com. They actually have front and back plates that you can buy from them, and honestly, it was an amazing experience. It was incredibly easy to add into my graphic card, and I went on a whole journey to do all of this copper modding with my own custom shims, and it was a nightmare and, to be honest, kind of a failure. I saw a lot of people online do it with success. I could not repeat that success a lot of the time, and Honestly, it just wasn't worth the time nor money. Even though it was a cheaper route, it was an inferior route because it would take more time. It also never had the same temperatures that Cool My GPU did. And it just wasn't worth the risk either because Cool My GPU cut it in a way that honestly it's not going to touch any metal around and it's going to make your graphic card incredibly safe versus I did catch a graphic card on fire myself trying to do it my own DIY way. So, I would really suggest that you use something like CoolMyGPU's front and back plates for your graphic card. Again, shout out to them. I am not sponsored at all. They just had a fantastic product and I am really happy that they did such a great service for me by finally getting these Zotac cards down to a reasonable temperature because it was a nightmare to deal with these temperatures. All right, so when we're actually unscrewing this, you're gonna unscrew these four and these two. Now when unscrewing these, I would actually suggest that you unscrew this a little bit, then this one a little bit, then this one a little bit, then this one a little bit. And you know, it doesn't have to be in that exact order, but you know, doing one on the opposite diag diagonal side, that's just gonna allow it to actually release properly and evenly um, without leaving too much pressure on one side. And when you're tightening it, doing the same thing. Tighten one side, go to the next, tighten that side, and do it little by little. Try not to rush it. It's just honestly a safe way to make sure that not only do you get an even spread with all your thermal paste, but you're not putting too much pressure on a side that you didn't mean to and causing something to break. All right, with the heat sink off, what we're going to do here is we're going to unscrew these holes. Now it's going to be different. I'm having trouble finding some of them, one right here. One, two right there, and another one right here. You need to unscrew these to actually open up the back. That way we can reach the back memory. We're going to come back to dealing with this in the future because we want to do the back first before we do anything else. When actually taking apart your graphic card and getting to the back plate, also don't forget that you have these uh, connectors here, and I already disconnected these ones. Make sure you disconnect and reconnect them before you're done. But yeah, we're gonna need to open, take these out to actually get to the back as well. The memory on the back of your card is really what's gonna cause most of your issues. There's no big heat sink like there is on the front and honestly, any issues you have are gonna come from here. Every test that I did personally where I only did the front versus back, honestly, the front, yes, it kind of helps, but the back, any changes you make to the back, that's where all the help actually comes from to lower those memory temperatures. So in my hand right here, I'm gonna put on, just to represent, this is Cool My GPU's copper backplate that I bought. And this is what I'm gonna try on this graphic card. I've also done this with just normal copper shims on my other graphic card. But on either of them, I would highly suggest that you go out and you buy, um, you can get them from Amazon pretty cheap, these non-conductive thermal tape. So it's really important for you not to let any of this metal touch the graphic card. If this copper touches any of this metal, it's going to cause a fire, it's going to break your graphic card. That's what happened to me when I was using uh, copper shims. One of the copper shims shifted a little and it touched something and it did catch fire. I am very fortunate that apparently it's still working perfectly fine. I don't know how, but don't play the game. It's not worth it. So you can see right here, I have this thermal tape taped around it. That way, when we actually add this on top, you can see it's not going to touch any of that metal easily. 
So it's just an extra precaution. I really suggest you do something like that. It's really not expensive and in my opinion, worth the effort to just make sure you have that one extra step to be safe. This is custom cut. It does look like it shouldn't touch, but I'm just not going to play that game. It came a little too close for comfort, even with this being custom cut. So I would just suggest you go ahead and get that tape. Real quick, I did forget to record and add a part that I do believe is important. Make sure you buy some Q-tips and some cleaning alcohol. There's gonna be some remaining waste from when you take off the actual thermal pads or old thermal glue that you're gonna to wanna to properly clean off before putting on new thermal pads or thermal glue. Using your Q-tips and cleaning alcohol, just make sure you properly wipe down everything, even the copper plate, all the memory that you've done. When you open up the GPU uh, as well on the front plate, make sure you clean everything off. You want it to be spick and span, no more debris. Once uh, your Q-tip looks clean, that's when you usually know it's all good. So when you're not getting any more thermal paste onto your Q-tip, that's a good sign you're ready to keep going with everything else. I did clean it in the video, I just forgot to record it. As you can see, I have the thermal paste on. These two blue tabs came with the actual copper plate from Cool My GPU. And once I take off that blue little sticker, they're adhesive, sticky thermal um, pads that basically are gonna help keep that thing stuck on top of there, not really shift around too much. I actually wasn't too nervous about where I put it or anything. I was even debating even adding it because usually when, once you put on the back plate, that thing's not moving, but I decided, you know what, they added it. Might as well be safe and use it, but yep, I didn't really care where I put it. Just put it in opposite corners. That way I kind of had a place to stick that I felt would be good enough. So that's how I did it. So now I'm gonna take off those blue little tabs and I'm gonna actually put on the copper plate before we go on to the next steps. Now that the copper plate is actually on the back, make sure you press down and evenly spread that thermal paste everywhere. Um, the next step I'm going to personally do is I'm going to get my Q-tips and clean down the top of this copper again just because I'm just being a perfectionist about it. And then once I do that, I'm going to put more thermal paste on top before we put back on the back plate. And I just added the thermal paste to the copper now where I'm going to put back on the back plate. Usually you actually want to lean on the side of less thermal paste, not more, but I ended up leaning more wasn't really a great thing, but don't worry too much about it. Honestly, it's fine. I mean, if it squishes everywhere, it's whatever. Though, if you do have less and it is more perfectly put on, you're actually gonna get better thermal results. More does not give you better thermal results. But that's what I ended up doing. And this was another video clip that I lost. I am so sorry. But the next step is you just need to put that back plate right on. You actually don't even need to see it. You're just going to put the back plate on the ground. I found that to be the easiest way. And then put the actual board on top, aligning the holes properly. And then you're going to end up screwing in the back plate and the board together. Then you can start working on the front plate. Now that we're actually done with the back plate, what we're going to do is I have a front plate also from Cool My GPU right here. And honestly, it's super simple. So this is thermal paste that I already put on. It was squished earlier because I forgot to record it. So this is after recording and then I cleaned everything just for you guys. But this plate right here, just gonna put some thermal paste down on everything once you get rid of the thermal pads that were originally on there. Once it's nice and clean using some alcohol, you're going to just place it right on top. Usually, I actually, when I did the shims, I used the like conductive or the non-conductive thermal tape to make sure it didn't touch any metals. But this honestly was so perfectly cut for me that I just didn't need to. And I felt very confident that it was not going to touch anything that it shouldn't. So I was okay with just slapping it on. And you literally, all you do is you just place it on top. Um, it's really simple. So we're gonna place that on top, put on some nice new thermal paste everywhere like I already did and you're good to go. So let's put this back together and see what the results are. All right, so now that I have the graphic card put back together, it's looking really good. It's actually kind of cool seeing the copper behind it as well. Um, looks a little gross because of the thermal paste on the back of it. And that thermal paste was not from today. I've actually tested so many things over time. One of the things I tested as well was using uh, heat sinks on the back. And to be honest, heat sinks help a lot. And I thought they were absolutely worth it. You can see I got a big hunkin' heat sink 
And this one's honestly bigger than it needs to be. Uh, a lot of the smaller ones don't get too small. I noticed that just does not help enough, but I'll put down in the descriptions the ones that I was like, hey, that really helped me, but I like these because it's just got a good spread and even though it's overkill, I love it. Put some thermal pads on the bottom of it and then I just zip tie it to the graphic card and it does wonders. Now we're gonna test this first without um, this so that way we can get some accurate results and then with this and uh, let's pull all our data together and we're going to start comparing things and seeing was this worth it is it a worthy endeavor because i actually don't have all the results yet we're about to find out right now using the cool my gpu copper mods on the 3090 i've been letting it heat up for about 10 minutes now and the results are already shocking me this is way better than i was expecting so my final results were amazing. I actually got the graphic card down to about 84 degrees Celsius, where it originally came in from the manufacturer hitting 110 Celsius. Adding thermal pads, got it to about the high 90s to low 100s, it depended on the weather. And then when I did my own custom DIY copper shims, it still was the low 90s, and sometimes we get up to the high 90s, but I still wasn't happy with that. Now, I don't know what the lowest temp that my graphic card is going to drop to yet because it is still in my green tent where it is very hot because it is summer. And with it being summer, I mean, inside that green tent, it can get to about 100 and more degrees Fahrenheit in that tent. So it's very hot. And the fact that it being that hot got it down to 84 Celsius reliably, that makes me incredibly happy. These Zotac 3090 cards were an absolute nightmare to get the thermals down. I had no issues with my Gigabyte 3090. A, a quick swap of the thermal pads and boom, it was fixed. But my Zotacs were just a nightmare. So I really enjoyed how easy it was to use Cool My GPU. It was very <laughs> amazing, honestly, to see that it outperformed my own custom DIY copper. And the TLDR as to why my custom DIY copper failed is I could not repeat what a couple people did online did, which was this perfect alignment to get perfect contact with the surface area between the back plate and the actual memory or the even the uh, front plate I couldn't get working either. That was just a massive pain for me and honestly kudos to them for getting it so perfectly aligned. I couldn't do that. So I decided to drop some money on some from Cool My GPU, which is obviously manufactured perfectly and I'm extremely happy with the results. So I would totally suggest that you buy some from them if you're looking to copper mod your graphic card and make sure you read their description very carefully because there are some back plates for certain kinds, some back plates for the other, and the same for the front plates. Just make sure you're buying the right model for what you need. But that's all from me. Thank you so much for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe, hit the notification bell, also hit the like. It's very appreciated when you do that, just so you know. Links to everything that I use is going to be down below. And if you have any questions, make sure you drop a comment or don't be afraid to join that Discord server. Also link in description. I have a lot of amazing people that are on there that help me every day. I mean, I have learned so much from my own community. It is amazing. So make sure you check that out if you also have questions because I also more reliably answer from there as well. But other than that, thank you so much and have a great day.